to spend the old journey locked in the toilet? Because we ain't got no tickets, have we, son? <laughs> How did we get on the train, then? We slipped through in the middle of them football supporters, didn't we, son? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Here, I just thought of something. What's that, son? How are we going to get past the ticket collector, Dad? What's this? <laughs> Oh! What'd you do that for, son? Now look what you made me do. <laughs> well, go on, son. Give the gentleman our tickets and tell him you're sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, Dad. What is it, son? He's a no good dealer from East Croydon. <laughs> we in the party of Victoria. <laughs> Just a minute, you two. <laughs> now then, have you got the stomach powder, the sickness pills, the toilet rolls and the passport? We've got to have that passport. You know what they like in foreign parts. You know what the continentals are like? Oh, come along, come along. Oh, come on, you look half-baked. Stir your stomach, shave yourself, open the door for a lady before I fetch you one across the ear. <laughs> Oh, come on, out of my way, useless! <laughs> oh, come on! Oh. You can't do anything right, can you? Do you know what you are? You're a ninny. There isn't a particle of brain in that soppy little head of yours. Oh, come on, we're off to the continent! We're on our second honeymoon. <laughs> Can I squeeze in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, certainly. Oh. Run for a little one, is there? <laughs> 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 all right, all aboard! <laughs> Take it away, Charlie. Right. Boop! <laughs> Kiddly it up. 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 Those are the days. Pardon? Steam. Kings of the Iron Road. Comparing diesel to steam is like comparing Twiggy to Mae West. <laughs> really? Yeah, I do them all, you know. Shunting. Yeah. Choo, 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 choo. Ba ding 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 bing bing ding 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 ding. Ba ding 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 bing 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 ding 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 ding. Very good. Very good. You close your eyes, you're there. Well, go on, close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'll train going under a bridge at 60 miles an hour, right? Kiddly dee, kiddly da, kiddly dee, kiddly da, kiddly dee, kiddly. Ah! It's <laughs> <laughs> good, isn't it, eh? <coughs> Here, remember this one. Fast, please! Ching! On a train? <laughs> that would be silly, aren't we? <laughs> Bus conductor. Ah, uh, yes, a bit before my time. <laughs> Put that light out! <laughs> This is Fump speaking. <laughs> Charmony calling. Charmony calling. <laughs> <laughs> then there was old Nasty himself. Kiss out! Kiss off, Pepe! He didn't quit and tass and didn't! So that's you! Kiss out of Trudus Rue! I tried to have a telephone! A German station announcer. Lighthouse. Oh. <laughs> Here's a good one. I've had a terrible cold lately. <laughs> I beg your pardon, uh, I really must be going. What train? Doncaster. Late. Points blew up at Peterborough. <laughs> <sighs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> we are not amused. Pardon? We are not amused. We were only saying to John Brown earlier this morning, we are not amused by the decline in the manners and courtesy of our subjects. Their conduct is most unseemly. <laughs> that is exactly what we are referring to. How dare you rise before your sovereign gives you leave to do so? Be seated, sir. You are stark raving mad. You should be locked up. Sit down. <laughs> we are about to board our train and would command you to show due deference as we do so. Be allowed out. He... <laughs> Who are you? I'm the station master. <laughs> what was all that then? That was my tea break. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this year's presentation of the Square Wheel Award. Awarded annually to the owner of the new car with the most faults. <laughs> this year's winner is Mr. Peter Baxter whose four-door saloon has no less than 246 dangerous faults, <laughs> including a steering wheel that comes off the hand, a right wheel that keeps dropping off, and brakes that don't work. So, Mr. Baxter, the Square Wheel Award is yours. Are you pleased at having the award? Knock once for yes and twice for <laughs> Name? John and Twistle. Uh, Murray and Twistle. Mm. Any connection? Yes. But only twice. Take a look to the Ponsonby reporting for duty, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Stand easy. Ponsonby. I believe I knew your sister, Penelope. How is she? In bed with Cramp at present, sir. Oh, would that be young Cramp of the household cabaret? <laughs> oh, never mind. No, sir. Oh, my dear chap, loosen up a bit and stop saluting all the time. You might hurt someone. We don't go in for much formality in the regiment. <laughs> What's your first name? My name's Freddie. Uh, Timothy, sir. Freddie. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, come along. I'll introduce you to the CEO. His name's Peter. <laughs> Could I ask you something? Certainly, Timothy. What do you call your privates? Tom, Dick and Harry. What do you call yours? <laughs> and here at Wembley Way, the armies of supporters of both teams are flocking towards the stadium for this all-London final between Spurs and West Ham. Up the Abbas! How are you, Spurs? As a matter of interest, this afternoon's match will Don't tell me you're going to watch Lil. I didn't think he was interested. Oh, I am. Very. I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's a turn up of the book. I've never known you watch football before, Bill. Football? Oh. Is there a match on? Is there a match on? Only the culmination of the greatest competition in sport in life, right, Ern? That's right, Dad. Uh -huh. It's going to be 20 million blokes watching that match this afternoon. Right. Uh, 19 million 999,998, you mean? <laughs> you two won't be seeing it. I want to watch the film on BBC Two. Film? Mm, love Story. I missed it when it was on at the cinema. There's nothing like a good weepy. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Wrong side, Dad. Your heart's on the left. Can't you ever tell when you're having your leg pulled, mate? Bill's only joking. Don't you, Lou? No. I'm completely serious. <laughs> I am open to negotiation. You're married to her own. You have every right to put your hand down her dress and get that thing back. <laughs> You'd better not try. 
If you want to see your match, make me an offer I can't refuse. Yeah, just what I thought. Them Women's Institute meeting is just a cover-up for the Mafia. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't, don't get excited. You've allowed yourself to become blinded by the miracle of modern technology. Hey? Uh, we still have the upper hand. Just by simply activating these old-fashioned legs of mine, I shall stroll over to the TV and, using this device called a hand, <laughs> switch over. <laughs> 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 it's no good, Ern. She's got us by the short and curly. <laughs> All right, darling. Now, what is it you want? Now, just tell me, will you? There's a fur coat in Sheila Morseman's shop going for 50 quid. 50 quid? That'll clear me out in a fortnight. <laughs> All right, all right. You win. Uh, thank God that's set. Uh, not quite. You will make your own bed and do all the washing up for the next three months. <laughs> oh, very well, my love. Answer that, Dad. Oh, certainly, sweetheart. <laughs> uh, then there's the question of you spending a few evenings at home, Ernie, instead of going down the pub. <laughs> yeah, well, I was getting fed up with going out every night boozing anyway. <laughs> that seems satisfactory. All that remains is £50 in exchange for this little device. I just hope this match is going to be worth it, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I've made up my mind, Ern, we're not giving in to blackmail. Shut up, you silly old fool. It's a matter of principle. Then you won't see the game in this house, I can tell you that. No, we won't. Get your coat on, Ern. That was Sheila Morseman on the phone. Right? <laughs> no good going round to her place. She hasn't got a telly. No, but she has got two nephews gone down with food poisoning. Well, what's that got to do with it? They both had tickets for the cup final. <laughs> and Sheila said we could have A little something to be going on with. <laughs> it's for my birthday from my wife. <laughs> and very nice, too. And beautifully wrapped, if I may say so. Yes, isn't it? Yes. yes. I gather she had it specially done in your gift wrapping department. Uh, yes, I thought I recognised the touch. <laughs> and now you, uh, you want it unwrapped. Well, <laughs> it to me in bed just as I was dropping off. Yeah. I couldn't sleep for wondering what was inside, so I came round to see you hotfoot. 
You do realize that there is an all-night gift on Rappery and Piccadilly, sir? <laughs> no, but I prefer you to do it. After all, you're the experts, aren't you? Well, all right, sir. In the circumstances, we'll be happy to assist. We'll do it under our emergency scheme. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Would you, uh, would you like it done while you wait, sir, or shall we contact you when it's ready? <laughs> it's certainly do with getting back to bed. Yeah. I mean, although I'm curious to find out what's inside, yes. and if you're going to do that for me, it does seem a bit superfluous for me to be here as well. Yes. Very sensible attitude, sir. Uh, would you like appreciation shown at the moment of unwrapping, sir? <laughs> I would recommend it, sir. Can be a very cold-blooded operation otherwise. Well, what would that entail? Oh, you know, um... What a surprise. Fancy remembering. Something I always wanted. That sort of thing. Of course, it would be done by experts who would naturally make a much more effective job of it than you could hope to do yourself. <laughs> oh, well, in, in that case... Uh, I presume you'd like it cherished, sir? <laughs> it's an optional extra, but proving very popular. Uh, what would that entail? Well, assuming when we unwrap the object, it turns out to be something you would normally expect to have around as an object of, say, beauty or delight, we could arrange to have it lodged in our appreciation room, <laughs> where one of our trained staff would go down and look at it lovingly every hour on the hour, <laughs> and dawn till dusk, or even more frequently, if you prefer. Oh, I see. Yes, for people whose time is the premium, sir, it's very much a boon. Well, in that case, yes, by all means. Mm, yes, which brings us now, sir, to the uh, old vexed question of disposal. Ah. Now, the policy we normally work to here is that in the ordinary course of events, the object inside, you know, this one, mm. whatever it may turn out to be when we unwrap it, will sooner or later, in the daily wear and tear of things, get broken or damaged or otherwise rendered useless. And all we need to know really is whether you want it when the time comes to simply disintegrate in the washing up water, or get dropped on the floor, or just come apart in someone's hair. <laughs> It's entirely up to you, sir, or you might like to have something heavy fall on it from a height. <laughs> Could it be knocked off a shelf with a feather duster at all? Oh, certainly, sir. Yes, nothing easier. Uh, by a French maid on a frilly sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think that could be possible. Yes, sir. I'll talk to our fetish department. <laughs> I assume when it's broken, sir, you'll want it thrown straight into the dustbin? Oh, yes. I mean, there's no point in patching it up. Not at that stage. <laughs> oh, none at all, sir, no. Uh, what, uh, what sort of time scale would you prefer, sir? Time scale? for the irreparable damage to take place, sir. Uh, six months or a year? You see, until it's been under the X-ray machine, it's hard to know what its normal lifespan would be. But if you want the whole thing over and done with fairly quickly, we could arrange to have it appreciated more intensively in a shorter period. And then we could get it into the dustbin for you in a matter of weeks or even days. My <laughs> word! Unless, of course, you want to take advantage of our special 50 pound Jubilee souvenir service. <laughs> in which case, we could simply throw it straight into the dustbin for you now without even unwrapping it. <laughs> well, most people seem to think it's money well spent, sir, for what amounts to a very real saving in time and trouble. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I assume you'll take a check. Oh, certainly, sir. Make it out to Harridge's, will you, sir? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sims? Uh, Mr. Sims is very much an expert in the field of gift disposal, sir. <laughs> yes, he's been with us for some years now. And I'm sure you'll be delighted the way he handles the operation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, sir, yes. Ah, here's Mr. Sims now. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. <laughs> Many people ask us how we do it for the money, sir, but that's our little secret. <laughs> so what happened to you? Uh, well, I, uh, I've been in a sort of an aeroplane accident with my mistress. A sort of aeroplane accident? Yes. Her husband's plane landed three hours earlier than we expected. <laughs> Good morning to you. Top of the morning to you, sir, miss. Hello. 
What a lovely day. Ah, sir. Tis that. Yes, I love the uh, the distinct smell of fresh country air. Ah, that be due to the pollen in the air? No, piggeries due west of you. <laughs> Mighty strong wind this morning. Yes. Uh, tell me, uh, are you a local? Oh, that I am, sir. That I am. Yes, my fa 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 farm. <laughs> Over there. Well, when I say my fa farm, it's partly my brother, so he's not interested in handling cattle and the like, you see. Dairy? Oh, he dares, all right. <laughs> He's just not interested, you say. But move over, Nigel. We were wondering if you could help us on the path to Bumbleton St. Minor. Oh, yes, mister. You just take the path across the field here and turn right the signpost. But there's an untethered bull in this field. Oh, bulls is all right. <laughs> if you approach them properly, sir, I mean, you take mine. He's as docile as anything. As long as he don't see the colour, uh, Blue. <laughs> oh, dear. And I've got blue shorts on. And I've got a blue T-shirt. Oh, dear, so you are. Ah. <laughs> well, I don't want to alarm you, but I think it'd be better if you t t t took another route. Good idea. <laughs> took them off, sir. <laughs> it's a long way round to Bumbledore to St. Mine. I'll take you all day. Yes, but why blue? I mean, uh, bulls are traditionally upset by red. Well, that's on account of mine being frightened when he was a bullock. Oh, really? <laughs> By what? The local Tory candidate. <laughs> a right c c c c c <laughs> conservative he was. <laughs> well, I suppose it'd be all right if we just took them off just to get across the field. Well, if you think it's safe, Nigel. Oh, safe as houses, as long as you don't see the colour blue and you sing the song, sir. <laughs> the song? Big Spender. <laughs> what? You know, sir, the minute you walked in the joint. I could see you were a man of distinction, a real b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b it sounds very strange to me. What do you think, Sharon? Oh, no, well, look, come on, let's get on with this. I mean, I'm getting cold. All right, here goes. Separately, sir, separately, together might frighten him. Oh, dear. Well, whatever you say. Look, I'll go first. You stay here, then follow on once I'm across. No, all right, then. Take it easy, sir. Uh, the song, Nigel. What? Oh, yes. Um, the minute you walked in the joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nigel, be careful. Look out, sir, he spotted you. Oh, Nigel, keep on singing. Oh, no, look, he's charging towards me. Oh! Run for it, sir! I can't look! <laughs> ah! <laughs> you said your bull wouldn't attack if we didn't wear blue and sang Big Spender. Ah, that I did, that I did. Well, then? Ah, but that's not my bull. <laughs> hey, why don't we go and have a nice cup of tea? <laughs> Before we try and dig your friend out of the ditch, huh? <laughs> ah, good evening. Are you Miss Jennifer Hoskins, who completed a postal questionnaire about your sex life for the Abacus Survey Company? I am. Are you from the same survey team? No, I'm from the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I've been meaning to have a word with you about Hetherington. He never damn well knocks before he comes. <laughs> oh, good 
Good morning, sir. Can I help you? Cameras, films, projectors, portable TV sets, colour TV sets? Electronic calculators. Oh, <laughs> you've come to just the right place, sir. We've been selling electronic calculators for over 200 years. <laughs> really? Any particular uh, calculator you're after, sir? I'd like to speak to you about this calculator you sold me last week. Oh, yes. Pleased with it, are you? No. No? You're not pleased with it? Why ever not? It doesn't calculate properly. Are you sure you're pressing the right button? I mean, have you read the simple 376-page manual that goes with it? Every page? It took me four days. <laughs> What's the problem? I mean, you don't subtract, add, divide, multiply, find the square root, as a full four-key memory, a percentage key, a fixed and floating decimal point, trigonometric function, hyperbolic function, geometry function, algebraic logic, a liquid crystal display, and gives you a reading in the dark, so why aren't you doing it? It doesn't have a number nine. <laughs> Is that all? Well, it was cheap, sir, and I did tell you it was slightly imperfect. Slightly, slightly imperfect? Yes, sir. How on earth can I work out calculations with no number nine? Well, you can do thousands of sums without using the number nine. <laughs> I mean, you can do eight times four, or seven take away two. I want to use a number nine! But I, I, I don't want to be awkward, but it's a, it's, it's a very popular number. It's one of my favourites. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> this uh, particular model, I mean, all you have to do if you want a number nine is to press number three three times. <laughs> I've tried pressing number three. What happened? It disappeared inside the calculator. <laughs> it went where number three used to be. Oh, so it does, yes. I wonder where it's gone. Perhaps it's gone to look for the number nine to keep it comfortable. <laughs> oh, listen, sir, I think they've found one another. Will you let me have my money back, please? Oh, no, sir, I can't, I can't give refunds. I see. Then perhaps you'll change this Mickey Mouse model for another one. Oh, I can't do that either, sir. No, no, I don't deal in calculators anymore. I've given them up completely. And why have you given them up? Too many complaints. <laughs> I'm into desk diaries now, doing a roaring train. <laughs> roaring. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. I'll change your calculator for one of our desk diaries. How's that? Look at this, sir. I mean, that is a beautiful piece of work. Look at that. Leather bound all the way down the back. See that? It gives all the bank holiday dates. No, I really don't think so. And it's got a wonderful coloured map of the London Underground. Well... And all the latest modern conversion tables. Very useful. Yes, yes. All right, I'll take one. And look at that, sir. Full page Saturday, full page Sunday facing one another. Oh, very handy, yes. And Mondays and Tuesdays. Mm, yeah. And Wednesdays and Thursdays. Oh, very good. Yes, I like that. I'll okay. wrap it for you. Yes, but... Hey! Yes, sir? Where's the Fridays? <laughs> I did say it was slightly imperfect, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. Yes, madam. Miss. Sorry, miss. I'd like to make a complaint. Uh, what, uh, what sort of a complaint? I'd like to report to the man just burst through my kitchen door and startled me. Did he threaten you or harm you? No, he ran out again almost immediately. Uh, can you describe what he was like? Well, he was tall, blonde, about 22, and had blue eyes and was very tanned. All right, we'll try and find him. If you do, tell him I'm home all day tomorrow. <laughs> More vintage comedy in a moment with Steptoe and Sons. 